Welcome back everyone to another deep dive. So today we're tackling something I think a lot of us can relate to um, as we get a little bit older. We're going to be diving deep into the shingles vaccine. And you know, it's interesting because you sent in some articles and I actually had a friend recently who had a really rough time with shingles and it made me think, wow, this is something we should really take a closer look at. Yeah, for sure. You know, a, a lot of people might think of it as just kind of a rash, right? But it can be a lot more serious than that. Yeah, that's what really surprised me when I was looking at these articles, the fact that it all comes back to chickenpox, like that virus that we probably had as kids. Exactly. And it can actually kind of lay dormant in our bodies for years and years and then reactivate later in life which is kind of wild when you think about it. Yeah, it is. It's like it's hiding out and waiting for the right moment to pounce. Yeah. So what is it about getting older that makes that reactivation more likely? Well, a big part of it is that as we age, our immune systems just aren't as strong as they used to be. You know, it's like it's like anything else. Things start to wear down a little bit. And so we become more vulnerable to all sorts of things, including this dormant chicken pox virus. So it's not just about the wrinkles and gray hair, huh? Right. It's what's going on inside that really matters. And there are certain things that can make us even more susceptible, like if you have a condition such as diabetes or rheumatoid arthritis that can further weaken the immune system. So it's like, you know, those embers in a fireplace, they seem like they're out, but if the conditions are right, they can flare up again. That's a great analogy. In this case, that fire is shingles. And it sounds like it can be a lot more painful than chicken paws was when we were kids. Oh, absolutely. The pain is one of the biggest things people struggle with when they get shingles. It can be very intense and it can last for a long time. It's not just an itch, you know, it's a really deep pain. Yeah, and one of the articles mentioned that the pain can stick around even after the rash clears up, which is kind of scary. That's true. And for some people, that pain can last for months or even years. It's called post-therpatic neuralgia, and it's a real concern, especially for older adults. It really makes you think about quality of life. Mm -hmm. You know, as we get older, how do we maintain that? Mm -hmm. And how do we avoid things that can really impact our ability to enjoy life. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to take shingles seriously and to think about prevention. And that brings us to the vaccine, right? Like, what role can that play in all of this? The vaccine is a really important tool for preventing shingles. It doesn't guarantee that you won't get it, but it can significantly lower your chances. And if you do get shingles after being vaccinated, the symptoms are usually much milder, including the pain. Okay, so it's not a foolproof shield, but it's like giving your body a fighting chance, right? Exactly. And I think one of the things that really hit home for me when I was reading these articles was the statistic that something like one in three people will develop shingles in their lifetime. Yeah, it's a lot more common than people realize. It's like those odds are not in our favor, are they? Right. And it really highlights why it's so important to have this conversation, especially as we get older. But of course, like with any medical decision, there's always those pros and cons to weigh, right? Right. Yep. There's always that balance, yeah. right? And I think one of the first things that comes to mind for a lot of folks is those side effects. Right. Nobody wants to feel lousy after a shot, you know, especially if you're already dealing with some health stuff. The articles did talk about some possible side effects from the vaccine. Mm. What are some things that people should be aware of and how do those compare to the risks of actually getting shingles? It's a great question. And, you know, it really is best to chat with your own doctor about your own situation. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, the side effects from the shingles vaccine tend to be pretty mild. Things like, you know, redness or soreness where you got the shot, maybe a headache. Isn't more like kind of annoying than anything super serious. Exactly. <laughs> like you might get with other vaccines, right? It usually clears up in a few days. Mm. OK. But what about those more serious reactions that you hear about sometimes? You know, the ones that are rare, but they can happen. It's easy to get kind of freaked out thinking, what if that happens to me? Yeah. I totally get that. And that's why talking to your doctor is so important. They can look at your medical history and give you advice based on you as an individual. But honestly, serious reactions to the shingles vaccine are very rare. OK, so knowledge is power, right? Better to be informed. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about, you know, maybe getting the vaccine. What about the flip side? What are the risks of just saying no to the vaccine? Well, you're basically accepting the full risk of getting shingles, right? <laughs> and we've talked about how nasty that can be. And it's not just about that initial pain. It's about the possibility of that pain lasting for a long time and how that can affect your life and even the people who take care of you. So it's kind of like we're weighing this small chance of having some discomfort from the vaccine versus, you know, a much bigger chance of having a much worse experience if you get shingles. 
That's a good way to put it. And remember, it's not just about you. Getting vaccinated can also help protect the people around you. You know, people who might be more vulnerable to complications from shingles, like older adults or those with weaker immune systems. It's like a community effort almost. So it's a decision with bigger implications than just for yourself. Wow, it feels like we've really gone deep on this one, huh? Yeah. From chicken pox to shingles to the vaccine and all the things to think about. As we start to wrap things up, what are some of the big takeaways you hope our listener walks away with today? I think the biggest one is that shingle is not something to just brush off. It's a serious health concern, especially as we age. And it sounds like being proactive about prevention is key, right? Absolutely. And the vaccine, while it's not 100% guarantee, it can really lower the chances of getting shingles and even make it a lot less intense if you do get it. Right. And, you know, at the end of the day, the decision of whether or not to get vaccinated is a personal one. There's no right or wrong answer. The important thing is that you make an informed decision. And hopefully this deep dive has given you the information you need to have a really good conversation with your doctor. Yeah, they can help you figure out what makes the most sense for you, taking into account your individual health history and all that. Speaking of taking everything into account, how do you feel about the shingles vaccine now? Has this deep dive changed how you think about it at all? It's definitely made me think more about the whole prevention aspect, you know, and just realizing how commie it is, is kind of eye opening. Yeah, for me, learning about the long term pain that some people experience, that's really scary. And hearing about how the vaccine works to boost your immune system. It's like you're giving your body some extra help as you get older. That's a good way to look at it. Well, we want to thank you for joining us for this deep dive into the shingles vaccine. Hopefully you learn some new things and feel more prepared to make the best choices for your health. Remember, knowledge is power.